Tiger Country 104.5 is WAUE HD2, Waverly, Auburn, Opelika. Tiger Country 104.5. The following is a presentation of Radio Alabama Sports. This broadcast is copyrighted by Radio Alabama for the private use of our audience. Any other use of this broadcast, descriptions, or accounts of the game without Radio Alabama's consent is strictly prohibited. Lee Scott Academy Baseball is on Tiger Country 104.5. Presented by the Orthopedic Clinic, Auburn Express Towing, and Auburn Bank. Also brought to you by Russell Building Supply, Troy Bank and Trust, Gouge Performing Arts Center, and Four Seasons Federal Credit Union. Now, let's join Jacob Goins and Christian Griffin. <laughs> A hot start here at Jane B. I'm sorry, at John Meals Field. It's one of the double header this afternoon between the Lakeside School Chiefs and your Lee Scott Warriors. We are just moments away here from first pitch. We're going to set it to a short break while we go and have the national anthem and the prayer. All before first pitch of the doubleheader. It's buy one, get one free day here at a, at a love night day at John Mills Field. On the other side of this break, first pitch and starting lineups all on the Lee Scott Sports Network. Bending, stretching, walking. The simple hopes in life are a real challenge with joint pain. When that happens, the Orthopedic Clinic is here to help. The Orthopedic Clinic offers a comprehensive range of restoring services, from total and partial joint replacement to bone health programs, physical therapy, and sports medicine. With offices conveniently located in Auburn and Opelika, the Orthopedic Clinic is close to home and here to help you stay in motion. Visit theorthoclinic.com to schedule your appointment today. Not every sports team has a glue guy, the unsung hero that does the dirty work. Society's glue guys are towing companies. Whether your car is in an accident or you own a business and need a vehicle moved, we all need tow trucks. When you need one, call Auburn Express Towing, offering 24-hour towing services. AET specializes in parking lot and private property towing in Auburn. Call 334-821-6033. Auburn Express Towing. Located at 615 Opelika Road. The Gouge Performing Arts Center at Auburn University is Alabama's newest premier destination for the arts, bringing you the very best of Broadway, dance, music, and more. Learn more about upcoming performances and our calendar of events online at gougecenter.auburn.edu. That's G-O-G-U-E center.auburn.edu. Or call the box office at 334-844-TIXS. Experience and knowledge from the promos. Russell Buick Center at Building Supply. Russell Building Supply is your hometown home improvement store. You'll find what you need when you need it. And as a Russell Rewards member, you'll be in the know about monthly specials and exclusive offers. Russell Building Supply, East University in Auburn, across from Cary Creek Publix. Experience from the promos. Russell Buick Center at Building Supply. Home buying has never been simple. In today's economy, it's vital to work with an experienced lender who understands your needs. Auburn Bank's mortgage lending team is made up of local folks who can help you navigate the process. Whether it's finding your dream home or making improvements to your existing home, stop by our new home in the Auburn Bank Center. We'll be glad to help. Auburn Bank, champions of you. Member FDIC, online at auburnbank.com. Equal housing lender, NMLS number 403461. Now, the starting lineups brought to you by Lee County Revenue Commissioner Olean Price on your LSA Sports Station, Tiger Country 1045. Just moments away here from first pitch at John Meals Field. I'm Christian Griffin here with you on the Lee Scott Sports Network. Let's dive into the starting lineups first for the visiting Lakeside Chiefs. 
It'll be Morrow, Scott, and McGowan. One, two, three. Casarino, Mott, and Wilborn. Four, five, and six. Simpson, Edwards, and Givens round out the lineup. Seven, eight, and nine. And for the Lee Scott Warriors, it'll be Ethan Hardy, Garrett West, Sam Jackson. One, two, three. J.D. Burns, Jake Cummings, and Braden Butler round out the middle. And then Lane Eddins, Ty Jones, and Pelzer Reeves round out seven, eight, and nine. Setting the defense for the Warriors, starting in the outfield, it'll be Burns, Gregory, and West going from left to right. And setting the infield, it'll be Jones, Butler, Reeves, and Jackson. Lane Eddins gets the nod behind the dish, and Ethan Hardy gets the start for the Warriors on the mound. Those starting lineups are presented by Lee County Revenue Commissioner Olean Price. He reminds you that if you need services from her office, there's the main office at the courthouse in Opelika and satellite offices in Auburn and Smith Station. A hot start here. At John Meals Field, that, all that being said, I'm not sure there's anything hotter than Lee Scott right now on a seven-game win streak. Looking to tally eight and nine onto that this afternoon. I've outscored their opponents 56-7 to seven during that seven-game mark. And it's taken all four aspects of the game, something that we've highlighted all year. From the bats to the mound to the defense and the asterisk with the, the special team side of things, the, the base running, the, the selfless at-bats, the ability to move runners over. Lee Scott's been doing just about every single category in the, in the highest level. The throwdown from Lane Eddins and... We are just about underway for game one. A buy one, get one free for Alumni Day here at Lee Scott Academy. A doubleheader between the Lee Scott Warriors and the Lakeside Chiefs. Hopefully no confusion for the players. Both wearing white this afternoon. Lee Scott in their traditional home whites with the Warriors along the chest. And Lakeside in there. They're whites with the Chiefs across their chest. First pitch from Ethan Hardy misses downstairs. The 1 0. Home put umpire says misses up and away. Two zero 0 swinging is Taylor Morrow. Gets it on the hands and is fouled down the right side. Apologies again. About the fast start this afternoon, but we do have two games for you on the Lee Scott Sports Network. Special thanks to the Russell Building Supply. Countdown to first pitch brought to you by Russell Dewitt Center and Building Supply. Experience and knowledge from the pros from your hometown home center. The 2-1 fastball is lifted into straightaway right field. Garrett West will take a few steps in and squeeze it for out number one. Parson Scott will dig into the right-handed batter's box. And a beautiful day here in Auburn, Alabama. Not a cloud in the sky. It's supposed to be a beautiful Easter weekend. First pitch breaking ball. Misses in the dirt for ball one. Gets the count back even with the fastball fouled back off the netting. Again, Ethan Hardy gets the start in game one for the Warriors. He will also lead things off for Lee Scott in the home half of the first. The 1-1 one -one is lifted right down the first baseline. It's going to be a tough play, and the play cannot be made. Sam Jackson trying to fight the wall, the sun, and a little barricade. All down there by the first base. 
dug out and it falls just out of play. But Hardy ahead, one ball and two strikes here in the top half of the first inning between the Lakeside Chiefs and the Lee Scott Warriors. One two curveball stays up and in, evens the count at two balls and two strikes. Look in, wind up the delivery, the 2 2 fouled. Off the netting once again. Sixty-eight degrees at first pitch this afternoon. Again, just we said it before, and when the Alabama skies just keep out doing themselves, creating that picture perfect view. This count runs full. John Mills Field looking beautiful as always with the, the bullseye cut in the infield, the stripes along the foul territory grass and in the outfield. The 3 2 is waved at. Scott gets just a piece. So we'll do the payoff once again. Three two is a curveball. Umpire says misses inside. Some of the Lee Scott alumni and the Lee Scott faithful disagree. But Carson Scott will make his way over to first base for the first base runner of the afternoon as he's awarded with the walk. As Luke McGowan digs in first pitch swinging. Taylor made six, four, three, and that's will retire the side just a beautiful job of pitching from Ethan Hardy you get the you get the one out walk and eliminate him and the batter all on one pitch nothing doing for the Lakeside Chiefs in the top half Warriors look to strike first in the home half on the Lee Scott Sports Network presented by the Orthopedic Clinic Life isn't made for joint or orthopedic pain. It's made for living, for family, for your favorite hobbies, for sports, for morning walks and afternoon playing in the park. If you suffer from joint or orthopedic pain, turn to the experts at the Orthopedic Clinic. Our board-certified surgeons provide cutting-edge surgical procedures and high-quality, innovative services all close to home. Don't let joint or orthopedic pain keep you from doing all the things you love. Visit theorthoclinic.com and schedule an appointment today. What's up, guys? This is Uncle Keith, founder of Uncle Keith's Red Sauce, Southern-style salsa, born in our Alabama kitchen, now found in local stores like Kroger, Publix, and Piggly Wiggly. Uncle Keith's Red Sauce goes well with burritos, nachos, taco night, and that old faithful chips and salsa. Order and ship nationwide to your friends and family at UncleKeith'sRedSauce.com. Remember, y'all, that's UncleKeith'sRedSauce.com. It's the best darn salsa you'll ever eat. It's good, y'all. This is where the Warriors play. Your Lee Scott baseball station is Tiger Country 104.5. Nothing doing for the Chiefs in the top half of the first inning. Warriors looking to strike first in their home half. It'll be Ethan Hardy, Garrett West, and Sam Jackson due up for the Warriors. And a reminder that the first inning of today's broadcast is presented by Auburn Bank, champions of you, and proud to sponsor Lee Scott Warrior Baseball. It'll be Luke McGowan on the bump for the Chiefs, starting in... Left, it'll be Carasino, Simpson, and center, Wilborn in right. And from third to first, it'll be Mott, Morrow, Givens, and Edwards. Carson Scott behind the plate. And again, Luke McGowan, a right-hander. Wearing number 10 this afternoon, the Clemson cut pants. We'll get the start. Warriors. 
I've got a lot of confidence in all the areas, but especially at the plate again early in this season. We've seen the bats go quiet here and there. Have a couple good innings, but then go down in order with some non-competitive innings. But again, outscoring their opponents 56-7 to in their last contests. Or their last seven contests. Again, looking to make it eight and nine here this afternoon. Ethan Hardy will dig in to get things going. And he gets hit by the first pitch curveball, so he'll make his way over to first. Brandon Martin will replace Hardy as he is courtesy running for the pitcher this afternoon. It's Garrett West. We'll dig in for his first plate appearance of the afternoon. I guess you could still say the morning as well. As we're looking at an 11 a.m. and a 1 p.m. doubleheader. First pitch is a curveball runner is off and running. And he is going to be gunned out, but the ball was on the ground. The ball was on the ground. I don't. It might have been on on the transfer after the tag. So, so curveball misses off the plate, but on the very first pitch of the at bat, Brandon Martin is gunned down. Scoreboard actually says that that curveball was called a strike. It's now the count 0-2 to Garrett West. I thought the curveball was off the plate. So West in a hole. The 0-2 is lined into right center field. That ball is going to get down and one hop the wall. West will reach second standing. A beautiful piece of hitting. Not trying to do too much with that curveball in the outer half. Just roped it. Over the second baseman's head into right center field. So West is aboard with the one-out double. Unfortunately for the Warriors, as even if Martin was still at first, I think that brings in the first run of the game. But nonetheless, a Warrior in scoring position here in the home half, looking to strike first against the Lakeside School Chiefs. Sam Jackson will dig in and await the first pitch from McGown. First pitch runs inside and will hit Sam Jackson. So second hit batsman of the inning. And then I'll put runners on first and second for the Warriors as J.D. Burns makes his way to the dish. So a hit by pitch, a caught stealing, a double, and then another hit by pitch is where we stand so far in the home half of the first inning. J.D. Burns looking to see if he can give the Warriors the lead. First pitch swinging, a chopper right back. Pitcher throws it to third. Third baseman wasn't looking. One run will score as that ball gets into the tarp. They're going to call a dead ball. So I think that they're going to allow. The second run should score as well. And that, yeah, that is that is the ruling. I think the third baseman Mott was expecting Morrow to to fire to second to try and get the double play, but instead threw it to third. Third baseman was not paying attention at all. Paul got down by the by the tarp and actually rolled underneath the tarp. So West will score. Sam Jackson will score, and J.D. Burns now stands at second base.
Jake Cummings watches the first pitch miss for ball one. Curveball misses downstairs as well, and it's something that the Warriors, again, have done so well at the plate is their timely hitting, but the ability to capitalize on the fielding mistakes, whether it's an error or just, you know, something to give the free passes, the hit-by-pitches have already capitalized here in the home half of the first with a 2 nothing lead. That curveball misses upstairs, so Cummings now ahead in the count. Three balls and no strikes. Unfortunate for McGowan because he made a good pitch and got the chopper right back to him. But decided to go to third. And that'll be a four-pitch walk to Jake Cummings. So the third free pass already in the first inning. And puts runners back at first and second. J.D. Burns stands at second. Now Jake Cummings at first. Braden Butler digs in for his first at-bat of the afternoon. And a packed out sports Saturday. The men's and women's college elite eight going on. Celebrating opening day and opening weekend in the MLB as that pitch misses downstairs. An entire slate of NBA games, college baseball, college softball, everything going on. A double steal for the Warriors, and both will reach without a throw. Timed up. McGowan perfectly was coming set and was given one look and going. Both runners got a Got two shuffles and had their momentum and stole those bases easy. So Braden Butler now has the ability to break things open here in the home half of the first. That curveball misses outside. Two and one the count. Butler, we've seen him traditionally at third base. It's the start at short this afternoon. Ty Jones will be... At third, that fastball misses upstairs, brings the count to three balls and one strike. Long look in the 3 1. It's chin music. Braden Butler has to duck out of the way. But he will toss the bat and make his way over to first. So the base is now loaded. Ducks on the pond for Lane Eddins. No better feeling for an offense than when the seven-hole hitter makes his first plate appearance of the afternoon in the first inning. And with the bases loaded, the ability to break things open here for Lane Eddins. First pitch breaking ball misses in the dirt for ball one. Corner infielders, even with their respective bags, middle infield in double play depth with one out. That fastball misses eye level, brings the count to two balls and no strikes. Back-to-back -back walks for Luke McGowan. Cannot afford a third, nowhere to put Lane Eddins. Two O's, a fastball called strike on the inner half. Could have been just a momentum strike trying to, to salvage McGowan on the mound. The 2 1. McGowan steps off to regroup. McGowan going from the windup now with the bases loaded. The 2 1 is a curveball. Stays upstairs, brings the count to 3 and 1. Nowhere to put Eden sitting dead bread fastball if he gets one. With selective aggressiveness. That 3-1 is a called strike right at the knees, so the count will run full. Three balls, two strikes, one out here in the home half of the first inning at John Meals Field. Warriors already with a 2-0 advantage, looking to break this one open. A 3-2. There's a fastball, misses up and away. Good at bat from Lane Eddins, and he will draw the bases loaded walk. J.D. Burns 
will step on the plate for the third run of the inning for the Warriors. Lakeside coach calls time, makes the slow trot out to the pitcher's mound. The entire infield will come with him, so the entire offense and all the base runners will meet as it'll be Ty Jones up to bat for the Warriors. Again, apologies for the hot start here this afternoon. But as always, a thanks to the Russell Building Supply Countdown to First Pitch, Lee County Revenue Commissioner Olean Price, and the Auburn First Bank inning. Hopefully that Auburn Bank first inning continues to rally. We can stay in it for a while. Warriors with a 3-0 lead here early. Three straight walks surrendered by Luke McGowan. Three walks, two hit-by-pitches, an error, and a double. The only out of the inning so far came on a caught stealing. A really good throw from Scott behind the plate to get Brandon Martin following Ethan Hardy getting hit by the pitch. But other than that, six straight Warriors have reached. Ty Jones looking to continue that streak here. First pitch fastball misses up and away. The 1-0. Backhanded stop from Scott behind the plate. 2-0 the count. And again, you're in such control at the dish. You want to be sitting dead red, but you also want to make McGowan come to you and throw strikes, and so far he's delivered three straight after the mound meeting. The 3 0 from McGowan to Ty Jones is in there for a called strike to get back in the count. Three balls and a strike. A 3 1. Misses upstairs. So the fourth straight base on balls. Ty Jones will take the free RBI. Warriors now lead four to zero. As Pelzer Reeves, the second baseman for the Warriors. Watches a first pitch fastball miss upstairs. McGowan seems to be aiming just a little bit, not following through everything. Either missing way upstairs or way down low in the dirt. Can't find that happy medium. That 1-0 misses downstairs, so 2 another the count on Reeves. That fastball runs in, almost hits Pelzer, but he turns and avoids it. Three balls and no strikes. The 3 0. The fastball misses upstairs. So a four pitch walk to Pelzer Reeves. Five straight walks now for the Warriors. And Lee Scott with a five spot here. In the home half of the first inning. It's just like that. Back to the top of the lineup and Ethan Hardy. He watches a first pitch in there for a called strike one. Hardy was hit by a pitch. Out five minutes ago, actually. He had one curveball in there for a called strike. So Hardy now behind in the count, no balls and two strikes, looking to help himself out on the mound. That curveball misses in there. Good stop from Carson Scott behind the plate to keep all three runners 
at bay. A 1-2. There's a fastball, lifted foul. That'll hit off the hitting barn. So we'll do it again. One ball and two strikes. A 1-2. Goes to the curveball. Hardy able to keep his bat back. His entire body said yes, yes, yes. But at the last moment, recognized the curveball and kept his hand back. The even count, 2-2. Two, two. There's a fastball lined into right field. That'll one-hop the right fielder. One run will score, and the Warriors will be happy to play station to station. Baseball Pelzer gets caught in a rundown, actually, but will be able to make his way back to second base without a throw. I think he was expecting... He was expecting Ty Jones to get the wave around third, but was able to scamper back. So base is still loaded for the Warriors. As Lee Scott has batted around here in the home half of the first inning, Garrett West officially got the party started with the one-out double. He takes a first pitch inside. One zero. There's a curveball in the dirt. Another good stop behind the plate from Scott. Go, stay hot. This is a a hitter's dream right now for Lee Scott and Garrett West, already with a double in the inning, and now gets an opportunity with the bases loaded. That fastball misses upstairs. So West now ahead, three balls and no strikes. That fastball, thought it was good, but home put umpire saw otherwise. So another four-pitch walk for the Warriors. And a seven spot here early for Lee Scott. Seven runs on only two hits. Again, Garrett West with the one-out double, and then Ethan Hardy in his second at-bat of the inning. Ripped a single to right. First pitch curveball to Sam Jackson. Misses upstairs. Sam Jackson was hit by a pitch. His first time up. Fastball misses upstairs, so 2 and 0 the count. That will run in and hit Sam Jackson again. That's a fastball. That does not feel good right in the rib area. He tosses the bat in a little bit of frustration. He stood up and now seen four pitches and was hit by two of them. And he'll take the RBI, but again, it's one that he will feel for a couple more days afterwards. So J.D. Burns will dig in for his second at-bat. He reached on an error by the first baseman, or by the pitcher, I'm sorry. He's first pitch swing, lifts one over the shortstop's head. That's going to get all the way to the wall. One run will score. Two runs will score. Jackson gets waved around third. J.D. Burns will dive in head first, eat dirt on the way, but will be sitting there safely for a one-out triple. He stays down on the ground for a little bit as he kind of just stuck to the third base dirt. Looked like it took the wind out of him a little bit. The fans... Give a little bit of a laugh as he stands up and appears to be okay. It's a dry slip and slide out there. 
So an 11 spot here in the top or in the home half of the first inning, rather. Curveball misses in the dirt to Jake Cummings to even the count at one and one. And Lakeside only has two substitutions for the entire game. So, again, you would love to be able to take McGowan out in this spot, but the question is how many arms? The one one is hit on the ground to shortstop. He bobbles it and is unable to field it cleanly. So, Cummings. Will reach safely at first. Following the E6, it was hit right on the screws. And short hopped Moro at short. I think it hit his hands because he was trying to field it cleanly. Bobbled it once, and it rolled behind him, tried to pick it up, bobbled it again. So Cummings... Will reach safely. Butler first pitch swinging. Grounds one through the 5-6 hole into left field. So he has his first hit of the afternoon. Runners now at first and second. And still only one away. Again, the first out of the inning followed. Ethan Hardy getting hit by a pitch. And a caught stealing on a nice throw from Carson Scott. And after that, it has just been a carousel for the Warriors as 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 straight Warriors have reached base safely. And again, if you're the Warriors now, this is one of those teaching moments to continue to play baseball the right way. Don't take the game for granted. Continue to do those little things right. Curveball ripped foul down the left field line. But again, just having that mentality, not showing up your opponent, continuing to do the things that you need to do in the correct the correct way again just having respect for the game for your opponent and for your squad as well the O2 down goes with the inside move but nothing doing The 2 is a fastball. Misses downstairs. By popular command, Blaine Eddins reached via the walk his first time up. The 1 2 is a curveball lined right over the second base bag. Cummings is going to come around and score. Braden Butler. Will make his way to third, and Lane Eddins on the throw to the plate. Got away from the catcher. So both runners will advance another 90 feet. Braden Martin will, repra will replace Lane Eddins at second. As it's now 13 to 0. Ty Jones. Again, by way of popular command, reached on a walk his first time up. Watches the first pitch in the dirt for ball one. Again, only two possible substitutions for the Chiefs this afternoon. So it is, at least as of right now, it is it is McGowan's inning. A fastball on the inner half for a called strike. The 
the one one's a curveball grounded to third he has to pick it up on a bobble and hurry up and fire it at first and he is going to be safe jones shows off a little bit of the speed following the bobble from the third baseman Mott, another run for the warriors will score The runners now at first and second for Pelzer Reeves. Pelzer swings and misses on the first pitch fastball. Saw that fastball up, and his eyes got big. It came up empty. The 0 1 is a curveball. Stays arm side, misses up and in to even the count at one apiece. 14 to nothing your score here. Lee Scott Warriors in control of the Lakeside Chiefs. 1-1 one, one is fouled back down by the softball complex. Whether well, you're tuned in on Tiger Country 104.5, Tiger Country 104.5 app, or the live streams on Facebook and YouTube, we thank you for tuning in and for your support of Lee Scott Baseball on the doubleheader this afternoon, an alumni day here at John Meals Field. A beautiful day for baseball all around. The 1-2 is swung on and missed. So Pelzer goes down swinging for the second out in the inning. And we flip back to the top of the lineup for the third time here in this Auburn Bank first inning. Again, last time I shouted out, I, bet, I believe it was three to nothing. We were hoping that that rally would continue. It definitely has. Shout out to Auburn Bank for playing a big part in this inning. First pitch curveball, Ethan Hardy misses low and away. Scott having to work behind the plate and is doing a really good job with the cards that he's been given. Uh, fastball on the outer half for a called strike one. Two on, two out here in the home half of the first inning. Warriors leading by 14. 1-1 one, one. is swung on and missed. Brings the count to one ball and two strikes. McGowan has a little bit of frustration behind that fastball. The one-two is lifted into center field. Center fielder broke in and then had to jog his way back and will make the grab for out number three. So the Warriors have their side retired, but not before a 14 spot put up in the home half of the first inning. The scoreboard. Can't even show that. Only have the four, but it is. It is 14 to nothing here. As we head to the top half of the second inning on the Lee Scott Sports Network on Tiger Country 104.5. Owner Sean Snow founded Advanced Graphics in 2004 to satisfy a missing service need in East Alabama. 20 years later, Advanced Graphics has proven mission accomplished. For any comprehensive graphic need, vehicle wraps, decals, signs, custom apparel, and even those difficult to source laser engraved ADA signs. The dedicated staff at Advanced Graphics offers exceptional quality with amazing customer service. Contact Advanced Graphics today at 334-501-8600. That's 501-8600. Advanced Graphics in Auburn. World-class service with local attention. Four Seasons Federal Credit Union. Crossroad in Amberville. We love our members. Our members love us. Oh, yes. Ever since I got off active duty, they have helped me. I would recommend to anyone, if you really want to get your finances in order, come and see for yourself. And I promise you, they will help you get on the path to financial freedom. Four Seasons Federal Credit Union with two local branches. Membership eligibility required. Accounts federally insured by the National Credit Union Administration. Game action is brought to you by Auburn Express Tool. Now, back to the action. Thank you. 
14 to nothing. Yes, you heard that correct. 14 to nothing as we head to the top half of the second inning. Ethan Hardy remains on the mound for the Warriors. It'll be Casarino, Mott, and Wilborn due up for the Chiefs. Oh, the 0 1 fastball is lined into right field. So Casarino. Goes the other way with a good piece of hitting and is award with a single. As Anderson Mott will dig in. First pitch, breaking ball, misses in the dirt for ball one. A fastball misses downstairs. So 2 0 your count here to Anderson Mott. A fastball runs in on the hands. So 3 0 the count. If you're Coach Cook, you're just stressing strikes, getting ahead of batters, and obviously Art Hardy is doing what he can, but unable to find the zone. So Mott is a war with the four pitch walk, and Coach Cook, with a little frustration, makes the jog out to the pitcher's mound. Auburn softball is in action this afternoon. They are taking on the fourth-ranked Tennessee Volunteers at 4 p.m. at Jane B. Moore Field. And the baseball team in College Station this afternoon taking on the fourth-ranked Texas A&M Aggies. So two tall tasks for the boys and girls in the diamond. Rhett Wilborn digs in, shows bunt, and bunts it foul. Nice job of getting ahead from Hardy following the mound meeting. A fastball misses upstairs to even the count at one ball and one strike. Runners on first and second here in the top half of the second inning. Warriors in control, leading 14 to 0. At 1 1 is swung on, and Wilborn comes up empty. That curveball. This is upstairs to even the count. Two twos, a fastball in on the inner half. Four called strike three. Ethan Hardy picks up his first strikeout of the afternoon on a beautiful fastball. Number one, go, Fastball on the inner half. Colton Simpson now digs in with two on and one out. He swings and miss. Swings and misses at the first pitch fastball. Hardy again. Following that mound meeting, a little bit of a tempo change on the mound, and it's reflected in him getting ahead of hitters and throwing strikes. That curveball misses just off the plate. So one's all across the top of the scoreboard. 
One one is lined into shallow center field. Gregory's going to play it on a hop. And both runners will advance to 90 feet. So bases are loaded for the Chiefs. Grayson Edwards, first pitch swinging, pops one up. Heads up right here next to us. Oh. Hits the armrest of a lady. Almost landed perfectly in, in her little cup holder. What's sketchy. She was in, in danger. But luckily, everybody's okay. A little different than a, than a car in the parking lot where everybody... It's unhappy when it doesn't hit a car. This one's more of a, a sigh of relief when nobody gets hit. That curveball dances out of the zone. See, even the count at one and one. Warriors would love a double play ball here. One one is lifted foul down the left field line. So Hardy now ahead of Edwards. One ball and two strikes. Hardy and the Warriors used a tailor-made 6-4-3 double play to get out of a bit of a first inning jam. The 1-2 defensive swing from Edwards. He fouls it down by the third base dugout. We'll do it again. One ball and two strikes. Look in from Hardy. One, two. Ooh, umpire flinched. But said that it misses inside, so the count will go even at two balls and two strikes. Corner infielders in on the grass. Middle infield in double play depth. That ball behind Edwards in the left-handed batter's box, but Lane Edens with a beautiful diving stop. On that one, you're selling out for the scoop, completely unable to get the body behind it, but able to pick it from behind Edwards. The 3-2 is chopped to Sam Jackson. He will step on first, and he will tag the runner out at home. The unconventional double play. I think the runner was trying to beat the ball home and step on it before with the force out, but there was no longer a force with Sam Jackson stepping on first. Lane Edens will apply the tag. And so after all of that, the Chiefs come up empty. We head to the home half of the second inning. Warriors in control, leading 14 to nothing. We'll be back in one minute on the Lee Scott Sports Network. Owner Sean Stowe founded Advanced Graphics in 2004 to satisfy a missing service need in East Alabama. 20 years later, Advanced Graphics has proven mission accomplished. For any comprehensive graphic need, vehicle wraps, decals, signs, custom apparel, and even those difficult to source laser engraved ADA signs. A dedicated staff at Advanced Graphics offers exceptional quality with amazing customer service. Contact Advanced Graphics today at 334-501-8600. That's 501-8600. Advanced Graphics in Auburn. World-class service with local attention. Four Seasons Federal Credit Union. All thrown in that furrow. We love our members. Our members love us. Oh, yes. Ever since I got off active duty, they have helped me. I would recommend to anyone, if you really want to get your finances in order, come and see for yourself. And I promise you, they will help you get on the path to financial freedom. Four Seasons Federal Credit Union with two local branches. Membership eligibility required. Accounts federally insured by the National Credit Union Administration. Your Lee Scott Academy Warriors baseball station is Tiger Country 104.5. Well, a conventional double play ends the top half of the first. A very unconventional double play for the Warriors, or by the Warriors, I should say. Ends the Chiefs in the top half of the second inning. Had one out with the bases loaded, a chopper to Jackson at first. He was able to step on first and fire home. As Lane Edens was able to apply the tag as the force was no, no longer there because of the force out at first. But just a beautiful play 
of Heads Up Baseball from Sam Jackson and from Lane Eddins behind the plate. As they were able to snuff out any scoring opportunities, we head to the home half. As Smith Harkins will dig into the left-handed batter's box. A new pitcher on the mound for the Chiefs. It'll be Riley Givens coming on in relief. The 0-1 is a fastball that misses outside. Smith Harkins, one of the few left-handed sticks on this Warriors team. He lifts one into right center field. That ball is going to get down. And roll to the wall. Harkins will throw on the brakes, but he is awarded a double. Warriors. Able to get some new bats in the lineup here in this second inning. As David McIsaac will dig in for his first plate appearance. Watches the first pitch miss downstairs. He then chops one over to short in time at first for out number one. But a productive out nonetheless from McIsaac. So one out, one on here in the home half of the second inning. Brandon Martin will now check into the game and have his first plate appearance of the afternoon. Looking to do a job for the Warriors. And bring home Smith Harkins, who stands at third. One zero is lifted, and that will go just out of play. We'll hit the Lee Scott, the roof of the Lee Scott dugout. One ball, one strike, one out here at John Meals Field. Warriors in control, leading 14 to nothing over the Lakeside Chiefs. That off speed misses, blowing away, brings the count to two balls and one strike. Warriors with 14 runs on six hits. They've also taken advantage of three errors. The 2 1 is lifted into center field. Ball is caught and fired over at the plate. But brings Scott up the first baseline. So Brandon Martin, with a good piece of hitting, is rewarded with the sacrifice fly in the RBI. As Smith Harkins, who led things off with a double, will come home and score. Alan Owen will step in. With the bases empty, he's first pitch swinging, lifts one into left field. Passerino with the glasses gleaming. We'll make a few steps back and make the catch on a trot to retire the side. But a sacrifice fly from Brandon Martin increases the lead to 15 for the Lee Scott Warriors. We head to the top half of the third inning after this one-minute break on the Lee Scott Sports Network. And all of this is presented by the Orthopedic Clinic. Walking. The simple moves in life are a real challenge with joint pain. When that happens, the Orthopedic Clinic is here to help. The Orthopedic Clinic offers a comprehensive range of restoring services, from total and partial joint replacement to bone health programs, physical therapy, and sports medicine. With offices conveniently located in Auburn and Opelika, the Orthopedic Clinic is close to home and here to help you stay in motion. Visit theorthoclinic.com to schedule your appointment today your business of 20 years hits a major growth mode. 
Then you realize you've spent 5,000 hours on conference calls, 8,000 hours in meetings, a million hours working late, all to take care of your customers. But you'll only trust your one true passion and your company's future to one bank, Troy Bank & Trust. Today, tomorrow, and always. The only bank you'll ever need, Troy Bank & Trust. Member FDIC. You're listening to the Lee Scott Sports Network, presented by the Orthopedic Clinic, the official broadcast partner of Lee Scott Academy Athletics. As we head to the top half of the third inning, Warriors of Lee Scott in control of the Lakeside School Chiefs, 15 to nothing, thanks to a 14 run. Home half of the first that capitalized on the leadoff double in the home half of the second from Smith Harkins. Brandon Martin brought him over to score. His head coach, Jared Cook, and the home plate umpire, believer discussions. Discussing some of the defensive substitutions. And I just want to go back to the home half of the second inning again. In a game like this, you're in control. You're wanting to do all of the little things right. Continue to play the game with respect to play the game the right way. And the Warriors did so beautifully. Again, a leadoff double. We've talked about the ability for Lee Scott to get him on, get him over, and get him in. When it's needed, that ABC baseball, Smith Harkins with a double. And then David McIsaac with a selfless at bat to bring the runner to third. And then Brandon Martin with another selfless at bat, ripped one into center field and got the sacrifice fly. The 1 0 is grounded over to Butler at short. He will fire over to make the play for out number one. Now Taylor So we'll flip the lineup back over for the Chiefs. And Taylor Morrow. Ethan Hardy remains on the mound for the Warriors. That first pitch fastball misses downstairs. The 0 1 fastball chopped over to Butler once again. He will show off the range as that ball is chopped up the middle and fire over to first in time for out number two. So Butler busy here in the top half of the third inning. One was an atom ball, and the other one was able to show off the speed, show off the range, and show off the arm a little bit. Again, we're used to seeing him at the hot corner, but getting the start at shortstop this afternoon. Carson Scott watches the first pitch fastball miss outside. Same spot, same call, brings the count to two balls. And no strikes, two away here in the top half of the third inning. Hardy looking to deliver a third straight scoreless frame. All three fastballs have missed in that left-handed batter's box. They're going to say that fastball missed as well. So, Scott, two, two plate appearances, two walks. For the 6-1 junior. Jack Giles will make his way to first, a courtesy run for the catcher, Scott. As Luke McGowan... We'll dig in. Watch the first pitch in there for a called strike one. McGowan started the game for the Chiefs and is 0 for 1 
so far at the plate. The curveball freezes. McGowan is in there for a called strike. So Hardy now ahead in the count. No balls and two strikes. Ripped over to Butler at short. He tries to field it on the forehand and is unable to do so cleanly. Ball was hit hard right on the barrel. Butler tried to reach out and poke it and it hit off the heel of the glove and popped up. He was unable to recover in time. So McGowan will reach. On the air from Butler. And Braden, if you're if you're watching or listening to this after the game, that one's that one's on me. Count even to Cole Casarino. He lifts the one one foul. But again, just the Commentators jinx again, just talking about the shorthandedness of this defense, especially Butler making this transition today from third to short. So that one, you can charge that error to the broadcast booth. Curveball misses outside, evens the count at two balls and two strikes. Deuces wild on the scoreboard. Two balls, two strikes, two outs. Gets in on the hands. It's going to be a tough play for Butler past the diving third baseman. And I don't have a number three for the Warriors on my lineup. It's going to be an infield hit for Cole Casarino. So he's now two for two in the contest. And for the second time in as many innings, the Chiefs have loaded them up. First pitch to Anderson Mott. This is upstairs. 1 0. There's a chopper. It's going to be a tough play. Hardy fields it on the backhand and will throw over to first in time for out number three. So, Warriors with a good job of dancing out of trouble for. The second straight time. And I believe that will call it for game number one. The Chiefs began to take the field. So I didn't want to call it too early, but both teams making their way back to their respective dugouts. Both coaches meeting here at home plate. So we will take a two-minute break before we open up the orthopedic clinic post-game show. Warriors are victorious in game one of the doubleheader, 15 to nothing. And the Warriors have now won eight straight contests. We'll talk all about that and more here on the Lee Scott Sports Network when we return on Tiger Country 104.5. From the back in 1907, Auburn Bank's mission has been clear to serve our community, see businesses flourish, and improve lives locally by making sound business decisions and responding with care every day. Today, we continue to fulfill our mission with a team of local, commercial, and consumer lenders who are ready to help meet your needs and goals. Auburn Bank, champions of you. Member FDIC, equal housing lender, online at auburnbank.com. Life isn't made for joint or orthopedic pain. It's made for living, for family, for your favorite hobbies, for sports, for morning walks and afternoon playing in the park. If you suffer from joint or orthopedic pain, turn to the experts at the Orthopedic Clinic. Our board-certified surgeons provide cutting-edge surgical procedures and high-quality, innovative services all close to home. Don't let joint or orthopedic pain keep you from doing all the things you love. Visit theorthoclinic.com and schedule an appointment today. Not every sports team has a glue guy, the unsung hero that does the dirty work. Society's glue guys are towing companies. Whether your car is in an accident or you own a business and need a vehicle move, we all need tow trucks. 
When you need one, call Auburn Express Towing, offering 24-hour towing services. AET specializes in parking lot and private property towing in Auburn. Call 334-821-6033. Auburn Express Towing, located at 615 Opalaka Road. The Goosh Performing Arts Center at Auburn University is Alabama's newest premier destination for the arts, bringing you the very best of Broadway, dance, music, and more. Learn more about upcoming. The Goosh Performing Arts Center at Auburn University is Alabama's newest premier destination for the arts, bringing you the very best of Broadway, dance, music, and more. Learn more about upcoming performances and our calendar of events online at gooshcenter.auburn.edu. That's G-O-G-U-E center.auburn.edu or call the box office at 334-844-T-I-X-S. Let's get back to the ballpark. It's Lee Scott Academy Baseball on Tiger Country 104.5. Warriors are victorious in game one of the doubleheader over the Lakeside School Chiefs. 15 to nothing in only three innings, or two and a half innings, I guess you could say. Warriors with a 14 spot in the home half of the first inning, tacked one on in the second, and shut down the Chiefs in the top of the third to extend their win streak to eight games. And, again, just an astounding stat, outscoring their opponents 71-7 to now in this eight-game win streak. I've played Lakeside three times now in that seven-game streak and have outscored the Chiefs 36 to nothing in those three games with just dominance from the Warriors at the plate. And I think the biggest highlight before we get into these individual highlights for the Warriors again. When you're in a game like this, you're in control. You continue to play the game the right way. You have your head on you. You don't disrespect the game. You don't disrespect your opponent. And you don't disrespect yourselves and the work that you put in. Because I promise you, we've all been around this game long enough. This game will humble you if you do not do that. And it will come back to haunt you later in the season. But the Warriors and Coach Cook, I'm sure, reached the ability and forcing his guys to to keep the same energy level, to not look at the scoreboard and continue to do all of those little things the right way. Again, it was a 14 spot in the home half of the first inning. Ethan Hardy was one for two on the afternoon. Garrett West, one for two. Smith Harkins, one for one with a double. Sam Jackson was hit by a pitch both of his times up. J.D. Burns had a bases-clearing triple and also reached on an error from the pitcher. Brandon Martin had the sacrifice fly in the home half of the second. Jake Cummings reached both times with a walk and an error. Braden Butler with a single and a walk. Lane Eddins with a single and a walk. Ty Jones reached on a walk and on an error. And Pelzer Reeves also on a walk. So, again, Doing the right things at the plate, taking advantage of, of the free passes and the free bases that you're given, and taking advantage when a team gives you more than three outs in every single inning. The Chiefs had three errors in the contest, and all of those doomed largely in the score column and, and led to runs both directly and indirectly in this contest. There was a discussion about whether or not game two would be played, but I believe I believe we have confirmed that game two will be on here in just about 20 minutes. Okay, perfect. We do have we do have confirmation we're looking at around a 12-25, 12-30 start for game two. So we'll throw it back to the music here for just a few minutes. We'll come back and have game two of the doubleheader between Lee Scott 
and the Lakeside Chiefs. Warriors victorious in game one and extend that win streak to eight games. Again, we'll be back here in about 15 or 20 minutes to, to set the scene. We'll get those starting lineups for game two. All in about 15 or 20 minutes here at John Meals Field. We'll talk to y'all here in just a few moments.
Tiger Country 104.5 is WAUE HD2, Waverly, Auburn, Opelika. Tiger Country 104.5. The following is a presentation of Radio Alabama Sports. This broadcast is copyrighted by Radio Alabama for the private use of our audience. Any other use of this broadcast, descriptions, or accounts of the game without Radio Alabama's consent is strictly prohibited. Lee Scott Academy Baseball is on Tiger Country 1045. Presented by the Orthopedic Clinic, Auburn Express Towing, and Auburn Bank. Also brought to you by Russell Building Supply, Troy Bank and Trust, Gouge Performing Arts Center, and Four Seasons Federal Credit Union. Now, let's join Jacob Goins and Christian Griffin. <laughs> We are just about five minutes from first pitch in game two between the Lee Scott Academy Warriors and the Lakeside Chiefs. An alumni day here at a beautiful and a perfect day for baseball at John Meals Field. Warriors were victorious 15-0 to zero in game one and have improved to 8-0 and in their last eight games. An eight-game win streak, looking to make it nine. And during these past eight games, have outscored their opponents 71-7, to not even allowing an average of one run a game. Again, seemingly doing everything correct and everything right. And especially in a game like it was in game one, where it really comes down to taking care of those little things. Again, making sure you're doing the little things right, taking care of the game, playing the game the right way again. It will humble you in a heartbeat if you don't. But we are just about just about set for first pitch. We're almost done watering the field. We just got the lineups. We'll take a quick two-minute break here on the Lee Scott Sports Net. We'll, we'll come back and we'll have the starting lineups and first pitch in the second game of a doubleheader between the Lee Scott Academy Warriors and the Lakeside School Chiefs, all on the Lee Scott Sports Network. Bending, stretching, walking. The simple moves in life are a real challenge with joint pain. When that happens, the Orthopedic Clinic is here to help. The Orthopedic Clinic offers a comprehensive range of restoring services, from total and partial joint replacement to bone health programs, physical therapy, and sports medicine. With offices conveniently located in Auburn and Opelika, the Orthopedic Clinic is close to home and here to help you stay in motion. Visit theorthoclinic.com to schedule your appointment today. Not every sports team has a glue guy, the unsung hero that does the dirty work. Society's glue guys are towing companies. Whether your car is in an accident or you own a business and need a vehicle move, we all need tow trucks. When you need one, call Auburn Express Towing, offering 24-hour towing services. AET specializes in parking lot and private property towing in Auburn. Call 334-821-6033. Auburn Express Towing. Located at 615 Opal Upper Road. The Gouge Performing Arts Center at Auburn University is Alabama's newest premier destination for the arts, bringing you the very best of Broadway, dance, music, and more. Learn more about upcoming performances and our calendar of events online at gougecenter.auburn.edu. That's G O G U E center.auburn.edu or call the box office at 334 844 T I X S. Experience the knowledge of the pros. Russell do it center at Building Supply. Russell Building Supply is your hometown home improvement store. You'll find what you need when you need it. And as a Russell Rewards member, you'll be in the know about monthly specials and exclusive offers. Russell Building Supply, East University in Auburn, across from Cary Creek Publix. Experience the knowledge of the pros. Russell do it center at Building Supply. Now the starting lineups brought to you by Lee County Revenue Commissioner Olean Price on your LSA Sports Station, Tiger Country 1045. Just moments away from first pitch in game two between the Lee Scott Academy Warriors and the Lakeside School Chiefs. Warriors 
victorious 15 to nothing in three innings in game one. Looking to continue that here in game two. Continue all of that momentum and get, riding an eight game win streak into this game two. A little bit of a different lineup for the Warriors. We'll start with the Lakeside Chiefs, though. However, it'll be Morrow, Scott, and Sampson, one, two, and three. McGowan, Casarino, and Mott, four, five, and six. And then Edwards, Givens, and Giles will round out the seven, eight, nine for the Chiefs. And the starting lineups for Lee Scott presented by Lee County Revenue Commissioner Olean Price. It'll be Braden Butler, Garrett West, and Sam Jackson. One, two, three. Lane Eddins in the four. Ty Jones in the five. Brandon Martin hitting six this afternoon. Harrison Short is DHing, batting seventh. Bo King in the eight. And then Easton Gregory batting ninth. It'll be Jack McKay that gets the nod in game two for the Warriors. Again, looking to continue all of the momentum that they have built in this now eight game hitting or eight game winning streak. They've done a whole lot of hitting. I can assure you of that again, outscoring their opponents 71 to seven in these eight games, including a 15 to nothing win in game one. A reminder that today's game is presented by Auburn Express Towing. Whether you're having car trouble in an accident or you own a business and need a car removed, call Auburn Express Towing, offering 24-hour towing services. Well, it was scheduled for a 12:35 first pitch. The umpires have been out here for about 10 minutes while the Lee Scott was finishing watering the field and making sure that everything was looking good. Just taking care of John Meals Field. You can see the care that they have for this field, and it shows just about every single game. I mean, the grass in in pristine conditions. Again, I was talking about it a couple of days ago, how it wasn't quite opening day here in Auburn, Alabama, as it was for the rest of Major League Baseball. But you you wouldn't want to say that to John Mills Field and the players and the coaches that take such good care of it that it, it does. It looks... It looks like a very, a very, very high level field. Again, the dirt always watered and perfect in that dark brown, the bullseye stripes on foul territory in the outfield and the bullseye circling the mound on the infield grass. Everything just looks so appealing to the eye. And on days like this, a 73 degree first pitch is what we're looking at for game two. The, the sunshine off that blue wall. Not a cloud in the sky and the trees starting to bloom behind the outfield wall. It is picture perfect. And it was picture perfect for the Warriors in game one where they got a 15 to nothing victory over the Chiefs. Looking to do things the same way here in game two. We'll come back in just a few moments as it seems like we are just about ready for first pitch. We'll take our final break in the orthopedic clinic. Countdown to first pitch. We'll be back here in just a moment for the first pitch between Lee Scott and the Lakeside Chiefs all on Tiger Country 104.5. We love our members. Our members love us. Oh, yes. Ever since I got off active duty, they have helped me. I would recommend to anyone, if you really want to get your finances in order, come and see for yourself. I promise you, they will help you get on the path to financial freedom. Four Seasons Federal Credit Union with two local branches. Membership eligibility required. Accounts federally insured by the National Credit Union Administration. Owner Sean Snow founded Advanced Graphics in 2004 to satisfy a missing service need in East Alabama. 20 years later, Advanced Graphics has proven mission accomplished. For any comprehensive graphic need, vehicle wraps, decals, signs, custom apparel, and even those difficult-to-source laser-engraved ADA signs, the dedicated staff at Advanced Graphics offers exceptional quality with amazing customer service. Contact Advanced Graphics today at 334-501-8600. That's 501-8600. Advanced Graphics in Auburn. World-class service with with local attention. 
home buying has never been simple. In today's economy, it's vital to work with an experienced lender who understands your needs. Auburn Bank's mortgage lending team is made up of local folks who can help you navigate the process. Whether it's finding your dream home or making improvements to your existing home, stop by our new home in the Auburn Bank Center. We'll be glad to help. Auburn Bank, champions of you. Member FDIC, online at auburnbank.com. Equal housing lender, NMLS number 403461. What's up, guys? This is Uncle Keith, founder of Uncle Keith's Red Sauce, Southern-style salsa, born in our Alabama kitchen, now found in local stores like Kroger, Publix, and Piggly Wiggly. Uncle Keith's Red Sauce goes well with burritos, nachos, taco night, and that old faithful chips and salsa. Order and ship nationwide to your friends and family at UncleKeith'sRedSauce.com. Remember, y'all, that's UncleKeith'sRedSauce.com. It's the best darn salsa you'll ever eat. It's good, y'all. Life isn't made for joint or orthopedic pain. It's made for living, for family, for your favorite hobbies, for sports, for morning walks and afternoon playing in the park. If you suffer from joint or orthopedic pain, turn to the experts at the Orthopedic Clinic. Our board-certified surgeons provide cutting-edge surgical procedures and high-quality, innovative services all close to home. Don't let joint or orthopedic pain keep you from doing all the things you love. Visit theorthoclinic.com and schedule an appointment today. Not every sports team has a glue guy, the unsung hero that does the dirty work. Society's glue guys are towing companies. Whether your car is in an accident or you own a business and need a vehicle move, we all need tow trucks. When you need one, call Auburn Express Towing, offering 24-hour towing services. AET specializes in parking lot and private property towing in Auburn. Call 334-821-6033. Auburn Express Towing, located at 615 Opelika Road. The Gooch Performing Arts Center at Auburn University is Alabama's newest premier destination for the arts, bringing you the very best of Broadway, dance, music, and more. Learn more about upcoming performances and our calendar of events online at gouchecenter.auburn.edu. That's G-O-G-U-E center.auburn.edu or call the box office at 334-844-TIXS. Experience it, it's from the pros. Russell do it center at Building Supply. Russell Building Supply is your hometown home improvement store. You'll find what you need when you need it. And as a Russell Rewards member, you'll be in the know about monthly specials and exclusive offers. Russell Building Supply, East University in Auburn, across from Cary Creek Publix. Experience, it's from the pros. Russell do it center at Building Supply. What's up, guys? This is Uncle Keith, founder of Uncle Keith's Red Sauce, Southern-style salsa, born in our Alabama kitchen, now found in local stores like Kroger, Publix, and Piggly Wiggly. Uncle Keith's Red Sauce goes well with burritos, nachos, taco night, and that old faithful chips and salsa. Order and ship nationwide to your friends and family at UncleKeith'sRedSauce.com. Remember, y'all, that's UncleKeith'sRedSauce.com. It's the best darn salsa you'll ever eat. It's good, y'all. It's Lee Scott Academy Baseball, and the countdown to the first pitch is on. Brought to you by Russell Building Supply on Tiger Country 1045. We are just about ready now. Again, we are expecting a 1235 first pitch of game two, 1245. As we are concluding the mound meeting between both coaches and the umpires. We'll take a look again around all of athletics today, not just collegiate athletics. Again, as it is opening day, opening weekend in the MLB, the Brewers and the Mets just had first pitch that's the first game this afternoon the Braves and the Phillies Braves coming out big with a seven run eighth inning to defeat the Phillies nine three in game one game two we'll have first pitch at 305 this afternoon
in the Elite Eight this evening. Third seed Illinois will take on top ranked UConn at 509. No need to speak on the game following that one this, this evening. Auburn softball at Jane B. Moore Field takes on the fourth ranked Tennessee Lady Vols. First pitch set for 4 p.m. And Auburn on the baseball diamond in College Station will take on Texas A&M and try and salvage game three in that three-game series. There's also the, the women's college basketball, the Sweet 16, wrapping up today. LSU and UCLA are halfway through the second quarter. Tigers leading the Bruins 25 to 18. So again, there is sports everywhere, everywhere you look today, but we appreciate you for spending some time with us on the Lee Scott Sports Network on Tiger Country 104.5, the Tiger Tiger Country 104.5 app, or the live stream on Facebook and on YouTube. Setting the defense for the Warriors here in game two. It'll be Martin, Gregory, and West in the outfield. From left to right in the infield, it'll be Jones, Butler, King, and Jackson. Wayne Eddins behind the dish. And on the mound, wearing number nine, it'll be Jack McKay. It'll be our first time seeing McKay this season. Saw him numerous times last year for the Warriors. But excited to see his stuff this afternoon. This afternoon, he's got that lively fastball that we all know of. Looking to get ahead and get ahead early. It'll be Taylor Morrow, Carson Scott, and Colton Sampson. One, two, three. As we are underway, first pitch fastball. This is low and away for ball one. Again, both teams wearing white this afternoon. 1-0 fastball. Past an outstretched diving glove of Butler. It'll sneak into center field. So Morrow is awarded with the leadoff single. Not a bad pitch from McKay. Got it on the hands of Morrow. Morrow did a good job catching just enough barrel. And sneaking it past the diving Butler. Carson Scott digs in. He's first pitch swinging. Chops one foul down the third baseline. Okay. Some set and the pause. Goes to the off speed in the dirt. Even the count at one apiece. Carson Scott was behind the plate in game one. He will be at third as he swings and misses at that fastball. Scott was 0 for 0 in his two plate appearances. Reached base safely via the walk both times. Runners off and going as up ball is fouled off the back net. Moro. The head first dive into second base will dust himself off and make his way back to first. Pitch that was too close to take for Scott, but unfortunate for Morrow because I think he had the base stolen. A really short lead over at first now. He is not running. That fastball misses off the plate to even the count. Seventy-three degree first pitch. For game two, a perfect day here in Auburn, Alabama. The fastball misses downstairs, so the count runs full for the first time here in game two. Three two from McKay to Scott is swung on and missed. Got Scott chasing, expanding the zone a little bit on the fastball. 
And Jack McKay picks up his first strikeout of the young afternoon. In steps Colton Sampson. We did not see Colton in game one. But Sampson playing center field for the Chiefs in game two. The 6'3 senior. First pitch fastball misses up and in. For ball one. Three seniors on the roster for the Chiefs. All three in the lineup here in game two. Colton Sampson, Taylor Morrow, who led off the game with a single, and then Riley Givens batting eight this afternoon. You'll see him in left field. The 2-0 off the end of the bat, pops straight into the heart of the infield. Butler battling the sun. We'll call everybody off and make the play for out number two. Nice job by the captain. Shortstop calling everybody off and making the catch. Two away in the top half of the first inning. First pitch to Luke McGowan. This is just off the plate. Definitely started it as a strike. Spun just off, apparently. The 1-0 is a fastball swung on and missed. McGowan comes up empty on the heater. One one fouled down by the softball complex. So McKay now ahead. One ball and two strikes. On the freshman McGowan. McGowan started game one for the Chiefs. The 0 2 pops straight up. It'll fall just beyond the press box. Straight behind home plate. So we'll do it again. One ball and two strikes. A leadoff single from Taylor Morrow. He's still. Remains at first with two outs. One, two, swung on and missed. McGowan can't catch up to the heater. McKay picks up his second strikeout of the afternoon. And the Chiefs are retired. Warriors looking to strike first and continue all of that momentum from game one to the plates here in game two. Don't go anywhere. You're listening to Lee Scott Baseball on the Lee Scott Sports Network presented by the Orthopedic Clinic. Bending, stretching, walking. The simple moves in life are a real challenge with joint pain. When that happens, the Orthopedic Clinic is here to help. The Orthopedic Clinic offers a comprehensive range of restoring services, from total and partial joint replacement to bone health programs, physical therapy, and sports medicine. With offices conveniently located in Auburn and Opelika, the Orthopedic Clinic is close to home and here to help you stay in motion. Visit theorthoclinic.com to schedule your appointment today. Your business of 20 years hits a major growth mode. Then you realize you've spent 5,000 hours on conference calls, 8,000 hours in meetings, a million hours working late, all to take care of your customers. But you'll only trust your one true passion and your company's future to one bank, Troy Bank & Trust. Today, tomorrow, and always. The only bank you'll ever need, Troy Bank & Trust. Member FDIC. It's Lee Scott Baseball Game Time. The first inning is brought to you by Auburn Bank on Tiger Country 104.5. McKay picks up two strikeouts in the top half of the inning. Shows a scoreless top half of the first. Warriors look to do damage in the home half and get on the board first. It'll be Braden Butler, Garrett West, and Sam Jackson. One, two, and three for the Warriors. The first inning of today's broadcast is presented to you by Auburn Bank, champions of you and proud to sponsor Lee Scott Baseball. We had a happy Auburn Bank 
home half of the first in game one where the Warriors struck for 14. I'm sure the Warrior faithful would be happy to see that again here this afternoon as it's alumni day at John Mills Field. A good crowd on hand to watch the Warriors. It is Anderson Mott, right-hander on the mound for the Chiefs to start game two. He delivers first pitch fastball. It's fouled off from Braden Butler. The 01 is a curveball swung on and missed. So Butler quickly in a hole, no balls and two strikes. Goes back to the curveball and gets Butler swinging. He comes up empty. So Mott with three pitches picks up his first strikeout of the afternoon. One away for Garrett West. Garrett West was one for one in game one. Had a double his first time up and walked in his second. Watches the first pitch fastball go by for strike one. Curveball fouled off. Mott in a little bit of a rhythm here. Five early strikes. And ahead of West, no balls and two strikes. The 0 2 is a curveball. One hop to Scott at third. He'll fire across the diamond in time to get Garrett West for out number two. The 0 2 curveball was hit hard. Coach just right at Scott. He was just able to stick his glove out. And make the play for out number two. Sam Jackson will dig in. And Sam Jackson had his hand up to call time the entire time. It was not granted, but on the very first pitch, he will take one off the arm. Shows a little frustration as all three plate appearances from Jackson so far in game one and game two have resulted in a hit by pitch. And I don't think that's necessarily frustration at, at Mott. I think the whole field umpire was going over there to calm him down, and he was saying it wasn't. It's not that. It's just the fact that I want to get up there and swing the bat. First pitch, swinging is Lane Edens. It's one in the straightaway right field. A little bit of trouble, and it's dropped. It is dropped. Sam Jackson will come around and score. Lane Eddins will park himself at third. The Sun possibly playing a little bit of a factor. As Giles seemed to be camped under it, then all of a sudden started drifting back towards the right field foul line and is unable to make the grab. Another perfect example of the Warriors taking advantage of getting guys on and getting guys over with two outs and taking advantage of the defensive miscues. And back-to-back ones right there as Sam Jackson was hit by the pitch and came around and scored on the air from the right fielder. Ty Jones watches that first pitch fastball miss upstairs. Braden Martin replaces... Edens at third, so the Warriors have another run 90 feet away. Fastball misses up and in, brings the count of two balls and no strikes. What seemed like it was going to be a quiet home half of the first inning. As quickly turned as the Warriors now have a 1-0 lead and are threatening to double it. 2-0 misses low and in. So Jones ahead. Three balls and no strikes. See if he gets the green light or if he's taking all the way. 
And that gives you the answer is that three of fastball right down the heart of the plate for a called strike one. But Jones sitting dead red ahead. The three one. It's fastball upstairs. He chases and fouls it straight back. So true full count. Three balls, two strikes, two outs here in the home half of the first inning at John Meals Field. Game two of a doubleheader between Lakeside and Lee Scott. The 3 2. There's a curveball past the diving second base, McGowan, and that'll sneak into right center field. Good piece of hitting from Ty Jones. Goes the other way with the curveball just past the outstretched glove of a sliding McGowan. And just like that, again, two quick outs for Mott and the Chiefs. And then a hit-by-pitch, an error, and a single. And just like that, Warriors have a 2 nothing lead. Brandon Martin steps in, first pitch in the dirt for ball one. Right-hander comes set. Delivers a curveball and a delayed steal from Ty Jones. Beautifully done there. And he will reach second without a throw. So now another runner in scoring position for the Warriors. Brandon Martin looking to send him home. Swings and misses that fastball. A little gust of wind comes by the first, it feels like, of the afternoon. The one two is a curveball that runs in and hits Martin on the inside shoulder. Ty Jones was off and running on the pitch, and I think he had third base stolen. Got a really good secondary, but he will have to make his way. Back to second base with the hit by pitch is Harrison Short, the designated hitter in today's contest. We'll dig in. Two on, two out, two already home for the Warriors. First pitch swinging is short, fouls it back by the softball complex. Two early outs and four straight Warriors have reached since. The one both runners are on the move. It's tipped into the catcher's glove. Throw down the third, not in time. So both runners will advance 90 feet. So now two in scoring, scoring position. If Harrison Short can find a way to hit one into the grass. The 2 curveball misses in the left-handed batter's box. Really good take. Short wanted to go after it, but wisely laid off. The one two. Ah. Lifted foul. Right by the flagpole. So good at bat from short. We'll do it again. One ball and two strikes. One two is in the dirt. Will sneak away from the catcher. Ty Jones is coming around, and he will score without a throw. Really good heads-up base running. That ball barely creeped out of the dirt in the circle behind the plate, but just beautiful base running, an aggressive base running from Ty Jones. And he brings home the third run of the ball game for Lee Scott. Martin will advance to third. Two balls, two strikes. A ball lined and caught by the shortstop, Morrow. Short went down and got the curveball, but just couldn't muscle it over the head of the 6-2 senior. So the Warriors are retired, but not before a three spot in the home half of the first. Again, a quiet first two outs. You thought it was going to be a quiet inning, but the Warriors doing what they do best, the ability to get guys on, get guys over, the timely hitting, and ability to make the team make mistakes and capitalize on those mistakes, and the Warriors find themselves up three 
after one. We'll be back here in one minute with the top half of the second inning on the Lee Scott Sports Network. Bending, stretching, walking. The simple moves in life are a real challenge with joint pain. When that happens, the Orthopedic Clinic is here to help. The Orthopedic Clinic offers a comprehensive range of restoring services, from total and partial joint replacement to bone health programs, physical therapy, and sports medicine. With offices conveniently located in Auburn and Opelika, the Orthopedic Clinic is close to home and here to help you stay in motion. Visit theorthoclinic.com to schedule your appointment today. Owner Sean Snow founded Advanced Graphics in 2004 to satisfy a missing service need in East Alabama. 20 years later, Advanced Graphics has proven mission accomplished. For any comprehensive graphic need, vehicle wraps, decals, signs, custom apparel, and even those difficult-to-source laser-engraved ADA signs. A dedicated staff at Advanced Graphics offers exceptional quality with amazing customer service. Contact Advanced Graphics today at 334-501-8600. That's 501-8600. Advanced Graphics in Auburn. World-class service with local attention let's get back to the game your lee scott baseball station is tiger country 1045 jack mckay back on the mound for the warriors delivered a scoreless top half of the first with two strikeouts it'll be casarino mott and edwards due up for the chiefs warriors after one lead, three to nothing. The other one's a curveball. Bounced foul. Again, two quick outs in the home half. A hit by pitch. An error by the right fielder that scored Sam Jackson as the 0-2 is swung on and missed. McKay goes to that lively fastball, and Casarino is unable to connect. Three strikeouts now for McKay. So one away for Anderson Mott, but again, so that first pitch is foul. Air by the right fielder. Brought home Sam Jackson. Lane Edens found himself at third. And Braden Martin later scored on the single from Ty Jones, the 0-1 is lifted into shallow center, left center field, center fielder Easton Gregory will have time to camp under it and make the play for out number two. Ball fooled a couple of the fans as it sounded louder, but I think he caught it off the end of the bat, did Mott, and hung up. Long enough for Gregory to make the play. First pitch swinging is Grayson Edwards, and that will one-hop Gregory in center field. So Gregory has himself – I'm sorry, Grayson Edwards has himself a two-out single. Riley Givens. We'll step in and take a first pitch fastball on the inner half for a called strike. Short lead over at first. Right back to the fastball. Thought it was good enough, but it called called a ball to even the count at one. Fastball in the dirt. It'll be short, King, no, I'm sorry. It'll be King, Gregory, and Braden Butler for the Warriors. As Butler fields this one in, throws it over to first in time for out number three. Again, a really nice play from Butler. Prides himself on his defense. The chopper able to field it and throw it off a of one foot in time to get Givens making his way down to first. So nothing doing. For the Chiefs in the top half of the second inning, we head to the home half Warriors with a 3 nothing lead already looking to expand that when we come back. You're listening to Lee Scott Baseball on Tiger Country 104.5. 
From day one back in 1907, Auburn Bank's mission has been clear to serve our community, see businesses flourish, and improve lives locally by making sound business decisions and responding with care every day. Today, we continue to fulfill our mission with a team of local, commercial, and consumer lenders who are ready to help meet your needs and goals. Auburn Bank, champions of you. Member FDIC, equal housing lender, online at auburnbank.com. Experience a place for the pros. Russell Buick at Building Supply. Russell Building Supply is your hometown home improvement store. You'll find what you need when you need it. And as a Russell Rewards member, you'll be in the know about monthly specials and exclusive offers. Russell Building Supply, East University in Auburn, across from Cary Creek Publix. Experience a Russell Buick Center at Building Supply. You're listening to the Lee Scott Sports Network, presented by the Orthopedic Clinic, the official broadcast partner of Lee Scott Academy Athletics. How about number 10, Bo King? It'll be Bo King, Easton Gregory, and then back to the top in Braden Butler here in the home half of the second inning. Warriors leading the Lakeside School Chiefs 3 to nothing through one and a half. Warriors looking to expand on that lead here. Anderson Mott remains on the mound for the Chiefs. Got a quick two outs in the home half of the first. A couple hit by pitches, an error, and a single. Gave the Warriors that 3 0 lead. A fastball evens the count at 1 and 1. Her ball. They're gonna say Bo Bo King did go around. So King behind one ball and two strikes. That ball is fouled off the mask of Casarino behind the plate. The one two. Here's a curveball. Ripped into center field. Good piece of hitting from Bo King. Mott tried to go to that front door curveball. King pulled his hands inside the ball and ripped it into center field for a leadoff single. Easton Gregory. Center fielder digs in for his first plate appearance. Mott tries to quick pitch Gregory, fakes the throw over, and immediately gets on the mound and comes set. So wise by Gregory to call time. We'll see if he shows Bunny does. Pulls back for a call at strike one. Could have been by design as it just gives more of an angle to sneak past the third baseman as Scott now has his feet planted in the infield grass. It does show Bunt once again and Opposite foul back straight by the net. So Gregory now behind in the count. No balls and two strikes. The O2. Shows Bunt and chases after it and comes up empty. So the unconventional strikeout from Anderson Mott. He picks up his second strikeout of the afternoon. Back to the top of the lineup in Braden Butler. Runners off and running. Butler shows Bunt but pulls back. Keeps the catcher Casarino in his crouch. For enough time, Bo King swipes second. And the Warriors get another runner in scoring position. Curve ball. Misses in the dirt. A wise take from Butler. Butler swung and missed on that curve ball. 
for strike three, his first time up. Fastball on the black on the inner half, a call strike, even or makes the count one and two. A good call from the field umpire again. Mott's trying to quick pitch. He does a a fake throw over and immediately gets on the on the rubber and comes set. Tries to do a quick pitch, but they're going to get him called for a balk. Did not come set. So Bo King will advance a free ninety feet. Now, if you're Braden Butler, just a hard ground ball up the middle will do a job. That curveball misses up and into even a count of two. Two two is lifted into center field. Should be deep enough to do a job. Center fielder catches it on his back foot. Will fire it in, but there will not be a play at the plate. Braden Butler picks up a sacrifice fly, and the Warriors now lead four to nothing. And again, it sounds like a broken record, but it's just something that the Warriors have done so well as of late. As they get that single, they steal second, it seems like, almost every time get somebody in scoring position, and it's either taking advantage of a miscue or, or a selfless at bat to get them to third and another one to score them here. And Braden Butler does another perfect example as Garrett West steps in, checks the swing, but the appeal over to first. Umpire says he did not go. West 0 for 1 in the afternoon. Grounded out to third. His first time up. Two a curveball. Get me over curveball in there for a called strike. West plays off of that. Didn't want any part. We'll live to see another pitch. The 2-1. There's a curveball in the dirt. Brings the count to 3 and 1. Long pause on the mound, and Garrett West will call time and step out, fix his batting gloves, and we'll step back into the box and await the 3-1. It's a curveball lifted into center field. Center fielder Sampson will take a few steps to his left and make the play for out number three. West has found a barrel in both at-bats, but unfortunately nothing to show for it, but the Warriors have one to show for it in the score column with a sacrifice fly from Braden Butler. That scores Bo King and the Warriors now lead four to nothing. We'll be back here in one minute with the top half of the third inning. You're listening to Lee Scott Baseball on Tiger Country 104.5. Dancing or stretching and walking. The simple moves in life are a real challenge with joint pain. When that happens, the Orthopedic Clinic is here to help. The Orthopedic Clinic offers a comprehensive range of restoring services, from total and partial joint replacement to bone health programs, physical therapy, and sports medicine. With offices conveniently located in Auburn and Opelika, the Orthopedic Clinic is close to home and here to help you stay in motion. Visit theorthoclinic.com to schedule your appointment today. Four Seasons Federal Credit Union, all grown and never owned. We love our members. Our members love us. Oh, yes. Ever since I got off active duty, they have helped me. I would recommend to anyone, if you really want to get your finances in order, come and see for yourself. And I promise you, they will help you get on the path to financial freedom. Four Seasons Federal Credit Union with two local branches. Membership eligibility required. Accounts federally insured by the National Credit Union Administration. Your Lee Scott Academy Warriors baseball station is Tiger Country 104.5. Jack McKay back on the mound for inning number three. It'll be Jack Giles, Taylor Morrow, and Carson Scott due up for the Chiefs. McKay delivers a first pitch fastball for a called strike. The 0-1. Going to be a tough play, Jackson. 
over to his right. Flips it over to McKay, who's covering. And that'll be in time for out number one. PFP done to perfection by Jackson and McKay. And that will retire Giles back to the top of the lineup and Taylor Morrow. Morrow singled his first time up, goes after the first pitch, gets in on his hands. And it's fouled down by the right field line. one's off speed. McKay was wondering where it missed. Tried to front door him. Said that it stayed just inside evens account at one apiece. That slider misses in the dirt for ball two. Christian Griffin here with you on the Lee Scott Sports Network, wherever you're tuned in from. We thank you for tuning in and for your support of Lee Scott Baseball. 2-1 fastball misses upstairs, brings the count to three balls. And a strike. Warriors riding an eight-game win streak ahead four to nothing here in game two of the doubleheader. A 3-1 fastball. I say that misses inside as well. Thought that definitely would have caught a piece of the plate. Morrow immediately tossed his bat. Might have had a little influence on the call, so he will make his way to first with the one-out walk. And Carson Scott will step in. First pitch swinging and rips it foul. Off the back net, got struck out swinging his first time up. The first of three McKay strikeouts so far. The one's a curveball lifted into right field. Garrett West. We'll back up a few steps and make the play for out number two. Now number one, Colt One on, two away here in the top half of the third inning. Colton Sampson will dig into the right-handed batter's box, and he's first pitch swinging. Grounds a curveball over to tied. Jones over at third, and Jones with a backhanded play will show off the arm as he throws all the way across the diamonds to get Sampson by a step. Nothing doing for the Chiefs in the top half of the third inning. Warriors looking to see if they can capitalize on a 4 nothing lead when we come back on the Lee Scott Sports Network presented by the Orthopedic Clinic. What's up, guys? This is Uncle Keith, founder of Uncle Keith's Red Sauce, Southern-style salsa, born in our Alabama kitchen, now found in local stores like Kroger, Publix, and Piggly Wiggly. Uncle Keith's Red Sauce goes well with burritos, nachos, taco night, and that old faithful chips and salsa. Order and ship nationwide to your friends and family at UncleKeith'sRedSauce.com. Remember, y'all, that's UncleKeith'sRedSauce.com. It's the best darn salsa you'll ever eat. It's good, y'all. From day one back in 1907, Auburn Bank's mission has been clear to serve our community, see businesses flourish, and improve lives locally by making sound business decisions and responding with care every day. Today, we continue to fulfill our mission with a team of local, commercial, and consumer lenders who are ready to help meet your needs and goals. Auburn Bank, champions of you. Member FDIC, equal housing lender, online at auburnbank.com. Game action is brought to you by Auburn Express Towing. Now, back to the action. To the home half of the third we go. Warriors with a 4-0 lead. It'll be Sam Jackson, Lane Eddins, and Ty Jones. Now back to roll up. Sam Jackson. Jones. I'm sorry. Jackson looking for his first official at-bat of the afternoon. Let's 
Fastball in there for a called strike. Jackson 0 for 0 on the afternoon. All three at bats have resulted in a hit by pitch. Goes after that curveball. It comes up empty quickly behind. No balls and two strikes. The 0 2. There's an off speed fought off. As that hits the shed down the right field line. We'll do it again. No balls and two strikes. That curveball stays upstairs. Good eye from Jackson to lay off. The one, two. So fastball stays upstairs as well. Even to count it two apiece. The good at bat brewing from Sam Jackson looking to make it pay off. That fastball misses downstairs. So Jackson from behind 0 and 2 has worked it full. The 3 2. There's a curveball that misses downstairs. Well, he's not hit by a pitch, but still doesn't have an official at bat in the afternoon. Three hit by pitches and then a walk. It's a nice day for a little OBP category. As Lane Eddins. We'll dig in another delayed steal. Work to perfection by the Warriors. That's something we've seen them do throughout the year. And that's got to be something they're paying attention to, how the catcher receives it. His tempo, when he receives it, how quickly he pops up. Warriors have done it twice here in game two. That curveball runs in and plunks Lane Eddins on the back. I number 23, let's go. So a walk and a hit by pitch to get things going for the Warriors. Already leading four to nothing here in the home half of the third. Ty Jones batting fifth steps in. Jones one for one on the afternoon. He shows bunt, and it's a beauty. Oh, but it actually rolls foul. Hit the hit the lip of the grass. It looked like as it was chopping its way down the first base line and popped itself foul. Jones catching his breath. We'll step back into the right-handed batter's box. See what he decides to do here. And he does. Shoulder square, but the inside move from Mott. Little cat and mouse game just to seeing if he will square. Jones does once again, and it's a curveball that he pulls back. As it misses up and in. Evens the count at one. Ball gets past the catcher. Both runners will advance 90 feet. So it works just like a sacrifice without having to surrender the out. And now with two runners in scoring position, Jones looking to do damage. The 2 1 swung on and missed. A healthy cut from Jones. As the count moves to two balls and two strikes. And now that mentality switches from doing extra damage on an extra base hit to simply putting the ball in play, hitting a hard ground ball through the middle and get that run from third across the plate.
The 2-2 is a curveball lifted into left field. That's going to get down over the left fielder's head right at the 345 sign. One run will score. Two runs will score without a throw. And Ty Jones will dance his way into second base. So Jones now with three RBIs on the afternoon. A single and a double to his name here in game two. And a, a nice double selly as well. Again, Warriors taking advantage of those free bases. First pitch swinging is Brandon Martin fouled straight back. He hits the bat in frustration. Martin was hit by a pitch his first time up. Three straight Warriors. Have reached. That fastball runs inside. One one. The fastball on the top half called strike. Warriors. Still threatening here in the home half of the third. Already added a two spot to increase the lead to six to zero. Martin calls time in the box. As he awaits the one two. That swung on and missed. It's going to get by the catcher behind the plate. Jones will advance to third, and Brandon Martin. Will reach base safely, so give Mott the strikeout. But no out is recorded on the drop third strike. It's Harrison Short will step into the right-handed batter's box. Short 0 for 1 on the afternoon. Runners on the corners here. Short lays off for ball one. Four straight Warriors have reached. Runner Martin was off and running, but the pitch was fouled off the net. Short calls time in the box and he's pleading his case to the umpire saying, hey, he's got to give us time. I mean, off a foul ball, Mott's already set as soon as Short is making his way into the box. That off speed misses upstairs, brings the count to two balls and one strike. Runner at first. Started and then stopped. Mott went with the slide step, so wise for Martin to shut it down at first. The ball was fouled off regardless, so two and two the count. Runners on the corners. Martin off and running again. That curveball runs inside and hits Harrison Short. So that will load the bases for the Warriors. As Bo King. Rocking a little Miley Cyrus. As he stretched his way to the plate. King one for one on the afternoon. He singled his first time up. The chance to do some damage. And completely open this game for the Warriors. Already leading six to nothing. First pitch fouled off the mask of the umpire.
and a little sympathy for the home plate umpire. He says he's good, but a little meeting between he and the third base umpire just to allow him to collect himself for a few more moments. But gives the thumbs up. We're good to go. No balls and one strike. Fastball misses outside. Evens the count at one ball and a strike. One one swung on and missed. So one and two the count now. And again, you hear the third base umpire, the third base coach saying, Hey, shorten up. Ball and play, do a job. The one two is a check swing. But King did not go around even to count at two. Ducks on the pond. Bases loaded for the Warriors. In that six to nothing game in the third. The 2 2 is lifted into left field and it's going to drop. It's going to short hop the left fielder. I don't know if he lost sight of the ball or just decided to play it on a hop. It looked like he was going to be camped underneath it. But the ball dropped. Warriors will play station to station, all going 90 feet. Little NASCAR. Another left turn. This King is now two for two on the afternoon. That extends the lead to seven to nothing. Bases are still loaded. Nobody out. Fastball to Easton Gregory misses upstairs for ball one. Gregory 0 for one on the afternoon. Looking to get into the hit column or the RBI column nonetheless. That curveball misses in the dirt for ball two. A reminder that today's game is presented by Auburn Express Towing. Whether you're having car trouble in an accident or you own a business and need a car moved, call Auburn Express Towing, offering 24-hour towing services. 2-0 fastball misses up and away. And Mott showing his cards a little bit on the mound, showing some frustration. 3-0 and in that pitch. In the dirt for ball four. Brandon Martin will jog his way. Step on the plate for the eighth run of the game. And Warriors riding an all-time high. Playing some great baseball in all four aspects of the game. Riding an eight-game win streak. Looking to make it nine here in game two. We're back to the top of the lineup in Braden Butler. Butler sacrifice fly his last time up. Fastball evens the count at one and one. Butler had two sacrifice flies last Thursday in the game. Already has another one here today. So racking up the RBIs. Has the opportunity to get one, if not a couple more here in this at-bat. The 2-1 is upstairs, but Butler couldn't hold the bat back. And the count runs even. The 2-2 is swung on and missed. So Butler... Is retired and hoping the torch can be passed to Garrett West. West is 0 for 2 on the afternoon. Has hit the ball hard both times. Has nothing to show for it yet. Looking for that to change in this at bat. That first pitch misses outside for ball one. Bases. Still juiced for the Warriors. One zero on the outer half. A called strike evens the count at one ball and one strike. Okay. 
That curveball runs inside and hits West on the Evo seal. That's why you wear the elbow guard. It might not be what he wanted, but he'll happily take the hit by pitch and the RBI. Warriors with a five spot here in the home half of the third. Now lead nine to nothing. And it looks like there's going to be a pitching change for the Chiefs. We'll take a quick break here on the Lee Scott Sports Network. We'll come back. We'll set the scene and we'll give you all the new pitchers information all when we come back on the Lee Scott Sports Network. The Goosh Performing Arts Center at Auburn University is Alabama's newest premier destination for the arts, bringing you the very best of Broadway, dance, music, and more. Learn more about upcoming performances and our calendar of events online at goochecenter.auburn.edu. That's G-O-G-U-E center.auburn.edu or call the box office at 334-844-TIXS. Owner Sean Snow founded Advanced Graphics in 2004 to satisfy a missing service need in East Alabama. 20 years later, Advanced Graphics has proven mission accomplished. For any comprehensive graphic need, vehicle wraps, decals, signs, custom apparel, and even those difficult to source laser engraved ADA signs. The dedicated staff at Advanced Graphics offers exceptional quality with amazing customer service. Contact Advanced Graphics today at 334-501-8600. That's 501-8600. Advanced Graphics in Auburn. World-class service with local attention. This is where the Warriors play. Your Lee Scott baseball station is Tiger Country 104.5. Riley Givens is the arm that comes in in relief for Anderson Mott. He comes in. Looking to snuff the fire of the Warriors already with a five spot here in the home half of the third inning. Still have the bases loaded. Looking to do more damage as the Warriors lead nine to zero. Warriors one game, one of the doubleheader, 15 to nothing in three innings. In control here in game two. Christian Griffin here with you on the Lee Scott Sports Network. Wherever you're tuned in from, thank you for tuning in and for your support of Lee Scott Baseball. Sam Jackson will be the first batter that Gibbons faces here this afternoon. Jackson again comically looking to have his first true at bat of the afternoon, and he does. First pitch swing, that ball hit into deep left field. It's going to be off the wall. One run will score. And it's going to end up being the longest single that you possibly could have here at John Meals Field. As it looked like it hit the glove and the wall at the same time, left fielder appears to be okay. How many times do you see something like that? You make your way into the game. Again, it was Givens that came in from left field, was replaced. In the very first pitch, left fielder immediately gets some action. Again, the ball was hit so hard and on a line that you couldn't really tell whether it was going to be caught or not. So it ended up just, be, just being a long single. Warriors now lead 10 to nothing. Lane Eddins swing grounds one over to third. Third baseman Scott will step on third and fire over to first in time for the double play. So that will retire the side. Warriors put up a six spot here in the home half of the third and are in control both at the plate and on the mound. Jack McKay back out for his fourth inning of work when we run back on the Lee Scott Sports Network. Song. From day one back in 1907, Auburn Bank's mission has been clear to serve our community, see businesses flourish, and improve lives locally. 
by making sound business decisions and responding with care every day. Today, we continue to fulfill our mission with a team of local, commercial, and consumer lenders who are ready to help meet your needs and goals. Auburn Bank, champions of you. Member FDIC, equal housing lender, online at auburnbank.com. Owner Sean Snow founded Advanced Graphics in 2004 to satisfy a missing service need in East Alabama. 20 years later, Advanced Graphics has proven mission accomplished. For any comprehensive graphic need, vehicle wraps, decals, signs, custom apparel, and even those difficult to source laser engraved ADA signs. The dedicated staff at Advanced Graphics offers exceptional quality with amazing customer service. Contact Advanced Graphics today at 334-501-8600. That's 501-8600. Advanced Graphics in Auburn. World-class service with local attention. Lee Scott Academy Baseball continues on Tiger Country 1045. The fourth inning is brought to you by Jeff Coat Trent. 10 nothing your score here at John Mills Field in game two between the Lee Scott Warriors and the Lakeside School Chiefs. Christian Griffin here with you on the Lee Scott Sports Network. Warriors with an eight-game win streak, looking to make it nine here and in control again, leading 10 to nothing through three complete innings. Jack McKay back on the mound for his fourth inning of work. It'll be McGowan. Casarino and Anderson Mott, four, five, and six. Harder lineup due up for the Chiefs. McGowan watches the first pitch, and I'm sorry, miss for ball one. Fastball misses downstairs as well. McGowan struck out his first time up. The second of three so far for McKay. A 2 0 swinging grounds one over. To Butler at short throw brings Sam Jackson up the line a little bit with a tag is applied to the runner for out number one. Good athleticism on both sides from Butler and from Jackson as well to be able to have the mobility to get off the bag, catch it, and apply the tag all in one motion. Fastballs to Casarino. The count even one and one. That fastball misses up and away. A two one. Spikes by McKay. Count moves to three balls and a strike. Three one to Casarino. Is a dribbler. It's going to be a tough play. Jones comes over from the third base spot, cuts off Butler beautifully, and fires over to first in time for out number two. Again, we speak about it just about every broadcast, the ability for this Lee Scott defense to make plays that are not anywhere near routine look routine. They look comfortable making those plays. First pitch swinging is Anderson Mott into shallow center field. The glass is gleaming from Easton Gregory. And he will make the catch for out number three. So that will retire the side in the top half of the fourth inning. One, two, three. Warriors looking to possibly close this one out. As we head to the home half of the fourth inning, Warriors in control. Ten. To nothing on the Lee Scott Sports Network. Russell Building Supply is your hometown home improvement store. You'll find what you need when you need it. And as a Russell Rewards member, you'll be in the know about monthly specials and exclusive offers. Russell Building Supply, East University in Auburn, across from Cary Creek Publix. Experience is from the pros. Russell, do it, Sandra. Building supply. 
The Goosh Performing Arts Center at Auburn University is Alabama's newest premier destination for the arts, bringing you the very best of Broadway, dance, music, and more. Learn more about upcoming performances and our calendar of events online at gooshcenter.auburn.edu. That's G-O-G-U-E center.auburn.edu. Or call the box office at 334-844-TIXS. Your Lee Scott Academy Warriors baseball station is Tiger Country 1045. Ty Jones, Brandon Martin, and Harrison Short do up for the Warriors in the home half of the fourth inning. Warriors with a 10-0 lead over the Lakeside School Chiefs. Warriors looking, looking to continue. Air hot play again. It's tough to reach a win streak in any sport. And it's definitely tough to reach it when you become when you know that it's noticeable. Warriors riding an eight game win streak, looking to make it nine here this afternoon in game two, outscoring their opponents 71 to 7 in those eight games. One game, one here, the doubleheader, 15 to nothing, ahead 10 to nothing as we enter the home fourth. Ty Jones, two for two on the afternoon, a single and a double. He has three RBIs to his name. He swings out the 1 0 and lifts it into the heart of the infield. It's going to be a tough play by the third baseman, and it's ended up being dropped. Again, that ball was hit so high. Jones, or I'm sorry, Scott got caught with his feet planted. And the ball with a little bit of backspin ended up working its way back towards the pitcher's mound. And tried to catch it moving forward, but it hits the heel of the glove. So Jones will reach safely for the third time this afternoon. Brandon Martin watches that first pitch fastball. Miss up around the eyes. One oh goes behind Morton. It didn't hit him, but goes straight back to the backstop. Jones will advance to second on the wild pitch. I think Martin, I mean, expected it to hit him. He saw his body tense up, and all of a sudden when I got by him, he looked a little confused. A 2 -0 fastball misses downstairs, brings the count to three balls, and no strikes. It's still Riley Givens on the mound for the Chiefs. The 3-0 in there for a called strike one. Martin 0 for 1 on the afternoon was hit by a pitch his first time up, looking to get in the hit column. Here in game two. Instead, that pitch misses downstairs. So he will make his jog to first with the one out. I'm sorry. The no out walk. So an error on the third baseman and a walk brings up Harrison Short. Short is also 0 for 1 on the afternoon. Was hit by a pitch. Two on, no out here in the home half of the fourth inning for the Warriors. Fastball runs up and in on short. Ten runs on six hits for the Warriors. A fastball misses off the plate for ball two. No runs on two hits for the Chiefs. They do have two errors as well. The first one. Very costly in that first inning from the right fielder, unable to corral the fly ball, led to three runs from the er, three runs in the first. An error by the third baseman to lead things off here in the home half of the fourth. Warriors looking to make them pay there as well. Harrison Short draws the four pitch walk, so just like that, bases 
are loaded for Bo King. Pitch on the outer half, called strike. So Givens ahead, no balls and a strike. Bo King, two for two on the afternoon, two singles. That runs in and hits Bo King. He started the load. It hit him, looked like right on the forearm. But it appears to be, appears to be okay. He'll take another RBI. Has some station to station baseball. Brings in another run, 11 to nothing. The 01 is lifted into right center field. Right fielder will make the catch. Runner from third will score. And Harrison Short will advance to third on the sacrifice fly. And that will do it for game two. A little, a little nonchalant ending is I don't think anybody was really aware of the, the score. But it has gone final Warriors. Victorious in game one and game two of the doubleheader, winning game one 15 to nothing and game two 12 to zero. We'll be back here in just around a minute or two as we will open up the orthopedic clinic post game show. We'll try and get Coach Cook and a player or two on the post game broadcast as well. All smiles for the Warrior Faithful as they are 2 and 0 on Alumni Day and move that winning streak to nine straight games. We'll be back here with the Orthopedic Clinic postgame show in just a moment on Tiger Country 104.5, presented by the Orthopedic Clinic. Stretching, walking, the simple moves in life are a real challenge with joint pain. When that happens, the Orthopedic Clinic is here to help. The Orthopedic Clinic offers a comprehensive range of restoring services, from total and partial joint replacement to bone health programs, physical therapy, and sports medicine. With offices conveniently located in Auburn and Opelika, the Orthopedic Clinic is close to home and here to help you stay in motion. Visit theorthoclinic.com to schedule your appointment today. Not every sports team has a glue guy, the unsung hero that does the dirty work. Society's glue guys are towing companies. Whether your car is in an accident or you own a business and need a vehicle move, we all need tow trucks. When you need one, call Auburn Express Towing, offering 24-hour towing services. AET specializes in parking lot and private property towing in Auburn. Call 334-821-6033. Auburn Express Towing, located at 615 Opelika Road. The Goosh Performing Arts Center at Auburn University is Alabama's newest premier destination for the arts, bringing you the very best of Broadway, dance, music, and more. Learn more about upcoming performances and our calendar of events online at gooshcenter.auburn.edu. That's G-O-G-U-E center.auburn.edu or call the box office at 334-844-TIXS. Experience it, they the pros. Russell Dewitt Center and Building Supply. Russell Building Supply is your hometown home improvement store. You'll find what you need when you need it. And as a Russell Rewards member, you'll be in the know about monthly specials and exclusive offers. Russell Building Supply, East University in Auburn, across from Cary Creek Publix. Experience, they trump the pros. Russell Dewitt Center and Building Supply. What's up, guys? This is Uncle Keith, founder of Uncle Keith's Red Sauce, Southern-style salsa, born in our Alabama kitchen, now found in local stores like Kroger, Publix, and Piggly Wiggly. Uncle Keith's Red Sauce goes well with burritos, nachos, taco night, and that old faithful chips and salsa. Order and ship nationwide to your friends and family at UncleKeith'sRedSauce.com. Remember, y'all, that's UncleKeith'sRedSauce.com. It's the best darn salsa you'll ever eat. It's good, y'all. Home buying has never been simple. 
In today's economy, it's vital to work with an experienced lender who understands your needs. Auburn Bank's mortgage lending team is made up of local folks who can help you navigate the process. Whether it's finding your dream home or making improvements to your existing home, stop by our new home in the Auburn Bank Center. We'll be glad to help. Auburn Bank, champions of you. Member FDIC, online at auburnbank.com. Equal housing lender, NMLS number 403461. You're listening to the Lee Scott Sports Network, presented by the Orthopedic Clinic, the official broadcast partner of Lee Scott Academy Athletics. Warriors extend their win streak to nine straight games as they defeat the Lakeside School Chiefs 15 to nothing and 12 to nothing. In the game, or in the doubleheader this afternoon. As we welcome you in to the Orthopedic Clinic postgame show. Presented by the Orthopedic Clinic, East Alabama's go-to center for orthopedic care. With locations in Auburn and Opelika to better serve you. You can find them on the web at theorthoclinic.com. Smiles all around John Meals Field this afternoon. As it's alumni day for Lee Scott Academy and the alumni Definitely proud of what they saw from this varsity team. As Coach Cook and the squad still meets out in shallow right field. Again, we'll try and get Coach Cook and a a player or two on the postgame show, hopefully here in just a moment or two. As Lee Scott was calling all alumni to the first base dugout. to recognize and celebrate them and thank them for for making the trip back to Auburn and to John Meals Field. Some individual stats for the Warriors in game two. Jack McKay, four scoreless innings of three strikeout ball, only allowed two hits, did not walk a batter. So again, the dominance on the mound continues for the Warriors. It's a double-edged sword, but it's working in two positives right now. Again, Warriors at the plate are taking advantage of just about every single mistake, every single missed opportunity by a defense. When on the other hand, Warriors not really giving not giving many teams four outs, not walking a lot of guys, not hitting a lot of guys, just playing real clean baseball. That was something that we talked about Earlier in the week, winning all four aspects of the game, offense, defense, pitching, and in the on-base side of things, whether it's stealing bases, taking extra bases, moving runners over. If you can win two of those categories per game, you really like your chances, but it seems like Warriors are just about skunking the opponents, winning all four of those during this nine-game winning streak. Some individual stats for you this afternoon. Braden Butler with a sacrifice fly, his third of the week. Garrett West was hit by a pitch. Sam Jackson finally got a stat in the at in the or the at bat category. Before them was four for four, zero for zero with four free passes. Was hit by a pitch in his first three at bats. Was was then walked and then hit a single off the wall, about the furthest single you can hit. In John Meals Field, Lane Eddins was hit by a pitch. Ty Jones with a single and a double also reached on an air. Brandon Martin was hit by a pitch and was walked. Harrison Short with two hit by pitches. Bo King two for two with a hit by pitch. And Easton Gregory walked as well. So you can see the eye that the Warriors are having at the plate again. In games like this, they're not necessarily ones that you're having to to work all that hard for if we're calling a spade a spade. but Again, what we were talking about after game one was just, or even in the middle of game one, continuing to play the game the right way, continuing to do all of the little things correctly, because otherwise this game will quickly come back to bite you. It will haunt you if you try and take advantage and show the game of baseball. Uh, Warriors, victorious in game two of the doubleheader. We'll take one quick break here in the Orthopedic Clinic post-game show as all of the alumni 
are in the dugout right now. I think they're about to try and take a picture. We'll take a quick break and hopefully get Coach Cook and a player or two on the Orthopedic Clinic post-game show. Warriors victorious here in Game 2, 12 to nothing over the Lakeside Chiefs. We'll be back on the Lee Scott Sports Network. Life is made for your recording aids. Living, quality for your favorite hobbies or sports. Quality walks and after playing in the park. If you suffer a joint orthopedic pain, turn to the experts at the orthopedic clinic. Our board certified surgeons are doing perfect edge procedures at the time while needed services all close to home. Playoffs wait for fast waiting. Bring all points your while. It's loving your home. Dot com and schedule an appointment today. Cambridge Sports Team has concluded tonight. They've got some of their players in their community completely. Society's blue dots are meeting with doctors, human or door guardians, and their accident line. So you should be the black guy to meet all the day to occurrence. You need one. Well, Auburn Express Doing will offer you 24 hour doing services. All you need to be specialized is to work in the firm of doing and offer. Phone three three four and way two one six zero three three. Call for an express bill. It's six ten two one one one. Two one. Thank you. That's G O A Center. Dot com and time. Sit down. 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 Sit Inspection of damage can sit on the business. Buildings and buildings and buildings and buildings and buildings and buildings and Advanced graphics today. Bring great order. Find more. Six hundred. Advanced graphics at all. Home class service. Protection. Yeah, action is brought to you by Express Chicken. Why? Why to be chicken? Warriors are victorious and sweep the doubleheader. Over the Lakeside Chiefs. As the Warriors move to a nine game winning streak. Again, playing the best baseball they've had. I think there's a little bit too much going on right now to possibly get Coach Cook and a couple players. There's a couple, again, there's a, or not a couple, there's a bunch of alumni in the dugout right now. And and they're setting a little a little a little fake mound and an L screen in the dugout or in the in the outfield. So I think they might be doing some little a little home run derby of some sort or some sort of of hitting competition. So we will go ahead and wrap everything up again. Don't want to keep him from being able to spend time with his guys after two big wins. But the Warriors, again, continue to show out their hot hitting, their dominance on the mound. 
and their defense playing all around really, really good baseball right now. And they sweep the doubleheader. Our next broadcast on the Lee Scott Sports Network will be April 1st against Southern Prep at home. First pitch set for 6 p.m. We will go on air at 5.45 right here on your home of classic country. It's Tiger Country 104.5, TigerCountry.net, and the Tiger Country 104.5 app. Thank you for listening to Lee Scott Academy Baseball on the home of the Warriors, Tiger Country 104.5. Again, Warriors victorious for the 8th and ninth straight time. And no better way to celebrate the sweep of a doubleheader than to do it on Alumni Day here at John Meals Field. For Jacob Goins and all of the Auburn Networks, I'm Christian Griffin. And until next time, enjoy your weekend, a beautiful weekend here in Auburn, Alabama. But until the 1st of April, have a safe weekend and go Warriors. Lee Scott Academy Baseball has been presented by the Orthopedic Clinic, Auburn Express Towing, and Auburn Bank. Also brought to you by Russell Building Supply, Troy Bank and Trust, Gouge Performing Arts Center, and Four Seasons Federal Credit Union. Follow LSA Action here on Tiger Country 1045. Franklin Jackson, John Ennis, Mayor Lee, Rick Short, John Lyle, and Alan Clark. They're, they're on three rounds. The first round is all 13 hitters. We put it at 10 points each. A home run over the fence is two points. A ball in the air that hits the fence or the weather track is one point. Judges on that are Will Reed and Michael Short. Blame them, not me. <laughs> there are three rounds, so the second round is the semifinals, and it will be just four hitters, the top four. And then there'll be a final round 